it gets returned anyway. So whenever we create the object, it gets returned into a global um, object that all the functions can use. Simple enough. So now what I want to do is I want to show you guys the main two different ways that you create this. So the first thing you're going to do is since we have one of two ways, it's best to use an if statement. The first parameter you want to put in this if statement is window XML. I actually, you know, it can't be like this text file where I can spell crap wrong. It can, uh, you know, so that's why I'm taking my time typing this HTTP request and make sure that you set up your, you know, capitalization and everything just like mine or else it won't work. So what this is basically saying is if a window is open in your browser, so that's what the window means, basically a window in your browser. So it's basically basically saying if your browser uses this XML HTTP request, and by the way, all new browsers use this object. So this is going to run probably 90% of the time. So if your browser is aware of this object, basically what I want to do is something really simple. I just want to go ahead and set this variable equal to a new instance of the object. So in a <coughs> oh, gesundheit myself. Oh, thank you, Bucky. All right. So what I want to do is set it equal to a new instance of this object. So bam, you're good to go. You can actually return it right here and it's going to work for 90% of browsers, probably even a little bit more. However, there are some idiots over at Microsoft who were working on Internet Explorer 6 and I think a few earlier versions, Internet Explorer 5 maybe, who decided that this, you know, maybe they wanted to change things up, do it differently. So thanks guys, way to ruin everything. So they don't use the object just like this. They actually use something called Active X object and it's made a little bit differently. So let me go ahead and copy this. And instead of just setting it equal to this new XML HTTP request object, like you should have done, Microsoft, you actually need to set it equal to a new active X object. And the parameter for this is Microsoft, since they are idiots, XML HTTP. Now, before I go on, remember that the summary of this is basically all new browsers, Chrome, uh, you know, Firefox, even the new Internet Explorers. This is how you create an XML HTTP request object. Some older versions of Internet Explorer do this. And remember, this is what we're doing. This is for a common browser, and this is for weird browsers. Now, some computers, and these are just like, you know, if you made your own custom browser or something, then they aren't even going to know what this is. So a way that you can kind of protect yourself against this is put a try catch statement inside this out. So you're going to try to create this because right here we're assuming that it's Internet Explorer 6 or Internet Explorer 5, but we don't know that. It may be some weird browser, so you can put a try catch in here. You also can expand this because there are several different active X object parameters, and that's why you know you had to explicitly say this one right here. But this code right here is going to work on 99% of all computers. Um, you know, that's a fact. So if your user is using some weird browser and none of this works, then we have a check later on that we can fix this. But don't even worry about it because, you know, if they're using a weird browser, then they're not even expecting your website to work. So don't even worry about it, in my opinion. So now that we worked with weird browsers and common browsers, all we need to do now is return the XML HTTP request object. So now basically what we did is we returned the object and we returned it into this global variable so now all other functions we create are able to use this object. So this object is pretty much the core of Ajax like I said. This is the object that does all the hard work, communicates with your server and your computer in the, in the background and allows the user to have a sweet, awesome user experience. So in the next tutorials, what I want to do is I want to go over the process and also the hand handle server response functions in detail. And remember like uh, the first couple of tutorials I taught about Ajax, I was like, 
these ready states don't really worry about them just go ahead and write like ready state 2 ready state 4 and don't even worry about it well now's the time where it's actually time that we have to start worrying about it and understand what they do so uh, anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next vid